the Power Star is split into the Power Sword and the Star Sword. And so, with Star Sword in hand, Black Star, together with his allies, sets out to save the planet Sagar. I am John Black Star. Welcome back to Retro Wednesday at the Tidy Room here. This is Mike. Today I want to talk to you about the entire vintage John Blackstar toy line. This is a toy line that is kind of similar to Masters of the Universe. We're going to do some comparisons there. But the show itself, I don't think, was nearly as good. I think the figures are better than Masters of the Universe. Kind of a similar type of style, developed relatively around the same time. This actually came out before it. But today I'm going to talk about every single one of the figures. I do not have any of the vehicles. I will talk about them. But we will cover the entire toy line, every single thing, coming up. Okay, so starting out, we're going to talk about John Blackstar, but let's get into size scale comparisons with other finished toy lines here. This is Masters of the Universe, and I'm having a lot of trouble getting him to stand up. I have almost no trouble with getting most of these figures to stand up. They utilize rubber in here that breaks down. This is a string. The one that I have that's uh, kind of fell apart, I had to fix it. It had string inside, so I think string holds up better than rubber in the long term, so that's kind of a smart move right there. He is a little bit taller. doesn't have that kind of hunch down look. I don't really like that about the vintage Motu. I don't like that squatty look. I don't like squatty look of scale, uh, of Shredder and all that kind of stuff from TMNT. But with this, uh, I think these toys do present better on a shelf. Here's a nice little comparison next to my new channel mascot, the STCC Zartan I had to make by myself because Hasbro didn't let me have one. But looking at him, uh, he's not quite 6 inch with the modern stuff. He's more maybe a 5 inch scale. And that scale works very nicely for the finished toy line. Starting out with John Blackstar, there are two different versions of John Blackstar, and there's two different versions of a lot of the characters. So as I get to a character, I'll show both versions at the same time, and I'll see any reason to split all that up. So looking at him, he does look pretty cool. That's a nice looking uh, head sculpt on both of them. I think it's the same head. Paint apps look pretty decent. Uh, I have a bit of paint wear on mine overall. He does kind of share this kind of, uh, whatever you call these, uh, little underpants he's wearing, the loincloth kind of thing and then down below here uh that's kind of what his pants look like now very little articulation head moves side to side arms do this and legs have uh just kind of that resistance to it so not much going on he does come with a sheath for his power sword power sword is supposed to connect with the other power sword but there really is no connection feature for that and all these weapons that look like this do glow in the dark so we'll see that later on after uh the 200 watt light uh kind of charges all these for like an hour or so and then uh overall this little cape is real flimsy it falls off very easy i don't think transplanting a cape from one figure to another you are definitely going to mess this piece up like i did over here so now this is a standard figure standard john blackstar and then uh here's a sword everything is just standard normal ordinary run-of-the-mill kind of stuff right but then later on they decided well you know we're gonna put these same figures out so people can still get them but we're gonna have laser lights so now this one doesn't have uh the flint in it or it's it doesn't work so this is one of the few laser lights i have that don't work but and it would have to be this one that doesn't work so in his cape uh i transplanted it from some uh, another one and kind of ruined it so i will figure out a fix for that down the road and I still haven't yet because I just wanted to keep it original as much as I could. Not that I care about reproduction, but if I could keep it original, why not? So there's John Blackstar with his laser light, and we'll see that action here in a bit. So next up, I'm getting the Trobits because some of the Trobits are packed in with figures, and some are in like a four-pack. I think they did a four-pack of some of them. Then they made them all kind of separate packs. But we're going to start with this one right here. This one here is called Riff. And Riff is, he's kind of cool. These are just PVC little figures. And it's kind of like the demons we're going to see here in a little while. They are uh, good guys. They kind of help out John Blackstar. And he has, I don't know what that is. The next one, I believe, is called Balker. And he has that big old mustache. So that's how I tell him apart. And he is packed in with Mara. We're going to see Mara as the next figure we're going to look at. John Blackstar is packed in with this guy here. Uh, he is called Polo. And he kind of looks like a young guy. He's a, a young dude. He's got something going on behind his back. Looks like he could be holding something, I guess. But the next one here is called uh, Tara. He's got a big nose, Tara. And so these are all some PVC ones, kind of cool. And then this one here is called Carpo. Carpo is, 
He's got kind of like buck tooth. Like see, all he wanted for Christmas was two front teeth, and that's all he got. Now we get into the most expensive, valuable, hard to find one, and this one is Grossamir. Now Grossamir has like really floppy ears, which is interesting. But when I finally got one, I thought I thought they were hard plastic. But I mean, I know these things are pretty soft, but. I didn't realize how floppy his ears were going to be, so uh, like he could fly away with those things. So pretty cool, pretty interesting, really hard to track this guy down. It took me almost uh, two and a half years to actually find one of those that wasn't over 100 bucks, And so pretty excited to, to get that one, fill this team out. But there's also one more. There's a custom one called Burble, and uh, there's a customizer in, uh, that in France, I guess, that makes these and sells them, and it looks spot on. It's like 30 bucks or something like that. So, uh, pretty cool if you want to fill out the team with an unproduced one that's a very nice looking custom. We're going to take a look at Mara. Mara is one that is really hard to get. Uh, I, I'm not sure. Maybe they shouldn't produce as many. Maybe that she's thinner and smaller and she just didn't hold up. Uh, I don't know. Uh, girl figures in boy toy loans don't generally hold up very well so i all i i believe all she's supposed to come up with is this headdress which this is kind of her uh, it's not really an, an item accessory it's more of kind of saying you know, a projecting her mind powers or whatever and then this is her shooting her uh laser pieces uh a beam they call it a beam that's what that is so overall she does look pretty interesting now i do have some wear and tear on her chest area on mine and the back for some reason has a lot of wear and tear and it doesn't really hold on very well this uh accessory which is really hard to find and again i had her i had bought an entire lot of figures and she was one of them that was in it uh, there were a few collections i was looking at, at the time and i picked this one up because she was in it and then i just went after the few parts that I was missing and so that's kind of where I went with that so she is one that's still pretty hard to get I mean she's not as hard as she was probably two years ago she was really hard to get almost impossible now there's several on eBay right now so you can pick one up if you're still interested in this toy line and it should go after her but getting her accessories that might be the challenge clone cat and uh, now I make a liar myself I have two of these uh, one of them came in my collection that I purchased and then the other one I got just so I could put the parts together to make two. All I needed was another torso. And as you can see, it's a laser light feature. So he's all this clear stuff. You should be able to use laser light through it and all of that. But he comes with the arms to become this and then arms to be back to himself. Now arms and legs and all that kind of stuff. So the thing is that he's a shapeshifter. So I guess he can sort of turn into anything he wants to turn into, but he chose, I guess he choose, chooses to turn into this werewolf looking thing once uh, maybe. So I did kind of uh, watch an episode to see what he changed into. I guess he changes into whatever he wants to. Here he is from the back. Now the thing is, uh, I have some serious problems with these laser lights. I thought they worked for some reason, but I'm missing parts. So I would actually like to find out how to get all this stuff to work again, because I would definitely go after doing that and figure that out, but uh, make them all work again. But then again, it's one of those functions and features that you use for 30 seconds and then never again. So still is pretty cool. It was kind of fun for kids back in the day, but this guy is a challenge to get. Now I am missing one part and that is his tail. And the odd thing is, is I, I went after a second one and I didn't even notice the tail and I actually wanted to get one cheap. I didn't realize why I kept getting outbid because I was getting outbid on the ones that had tails and uh, the tail is the hardest part to get. So I don't have that. And that's just uh, something I have to live with. And I might get one down the road, but for the most part, I think he looks pretty cool like this. And I would not display him with the tail on anyway. But yeah, it'd be nice to have one. So we have the White Knight. Now, the thing about him is that he is, I think, series two or three down the road because he has the Sparker gimmick in him. He also comes with a mini uh, troll looking <laughs> White Knight. And so that's kind of like a mini me over here. Uh, interesting that he comes with this. Another kind of PVC kind of figure that does not want to stand up for some reason. But he is kind of cool. He has very limited articulation, his arms move like this and uh he's just he's got one arm formed to hold his shield one formed to just hold this really no action for him here he is from the back now i do have trouble making him look nice i mean i cleaned him when i got him and i gave him a real thorough cleaning before this video because it just i just don't feel like he looks bright white enough he doesn't even look faded at all or, or, or you know yellowed at all he just doesn't look like he's clean even though i've cleaned the heck out of him now there's the sparking gimmick. Works very well with him. And oddly enough, when I cleaned him real well, the sparking gimmick stopped working when it got wet. So it's one of those things. I was really worried that I messed up his sparking gimmick. But uh, anyway, pretty cool. White Knight. Uh, this is one that I probably would troop build and have like two or three or four of them just for fun. 
All right, next up we're going to get into some of these demons. That These are companion pieces. I think some of them sold separately. I think there's a black demon that's really rare, and then there's another color of demon out there that's pretty rare. Uh, just slightly different colors. Oh, here's an orange one. Uh, yeah, there's an orange one that goes in there. So I don't I didn't go after variations. I literally didn't go after any of the demons. They were either already in the collection or they just came in a lot. And so I really didn't worry about it. And it, I just seemed to get one of each color except for the extremely rare uh, colors that were just not released in the U.S. from my understanding. So for the most part, I think that most figures are packed with one of these. And I'm not sure if this is green and this is like a yellow or if they're both green and this one's faded. One of them's slightly different. So again, I don't know all that, but they're packed with one that looks about this color. So with that, if you pick one up that's about that color, then uh, that it probably goes with the vast majority of these. The blue one goes with the Vizier, where we'll see that here in just a little bit. And as for these other ones, I don't know if they were randomly packed or whatever, but I just looked at mitten package figures for every figure and almost everyone comes with this guy. So here we come with the Palace Guard. And so with the Palace Guard, this is gonna show another one of the variations from the first version to the second version, which was either series two or series three, whatever it was. But this one actually, you had to change out the hardware. So let's take a look real quick at this guy. So as you can see, when you turn around to the back, because of the sparking gimmick, he can't wear a backpack anymore. So he originally had a backpack and had to redesign it to a belt. So his gun, flamethrower, or whatever all that is. And it almost looks like there's something else that you can put in there, but I guess nothing really goes with it. And so that's interesting. Like to me, in my mind, it's interesting how they're doing all this stuff. Now, some of the capes are going to get changed around on some of these other bad guys. And so Palace Guard right here looks kind of cool. Kind of looks like he's uh, some sort of a bird man. Let's go ahead and take his helmet off and get that bird man look going on right there. And so that's pretty cool overall. Now, let's see if I can get the sparking gimmick to work. Oh, I don't remember. Does it work? Yes. So most of my sparkers, sparkers work. Except for the ones that are the most important, I guess. So next we're going to take a look at Overlord. Overlord is pretty interesting looking character and uh, very similar in a lot of respects to the Black Star figure. But of course he has this headdress, nice big face. If you look at the difference between these two, the Sparker has a smaller face. Maybe all of this was supposed to be painted on this. or maybe The head's probably smaller. I don't know if there's other head variations or all that kind of stuff in here. So I don't have that many of them. But looking at these side by side, they look different in the face, different obviously in the chest because of the sparker. They do have the same uh, sword. These are the power swords that go with them. And so uh, here's the thing. He's got like the dark sword or something like that, um, some along those lines. And the power sword is what he's after so he can combine the two swords and make a giant, one giant power sword or whatever. But I don't see a way to combine them. I guess it's just all imagination. So looking at them from the back, they both come with a cape, but they're slightly different capes. And uh, so with this, I did have to kind of repair a cape and I just kind of glue it back on. Let's see if I can get him to stand. So this is one here has a single port because he was just the standard figure and that's just how they made them back then. But then somewhere along the lines comes the sparker and they had to redo the sparkers. And so with that, so with this one here, I actually cleaned the cape and I flattened it, which I guess I should do to this one too. Very good result with that. And then uh, because I was trying to get it set up to work well with this sparker here. Oh, what happened? There, there's the sparking mechanism. So they had to change the cape to two pins. Oh, wow, what's going on there? I want to come out. It's not wanting to come out, but uh, it has two pins in there. So you're going to see that uh, repeated over and over and over for any of the figures that have capes and a sparker. I just wanted to show that. And so a lot of fun right there. And this is Overlord, the main bad guy with his version of the power sword. So next up we have Gargo. And so this guy here is going to a toga party and he's like, hey, the party doesn't start unless he's there. And it doesn't start unless he has his wings on. So pretty interesting character and it looks pretty cool and it's dramatically different from one figure to the other you got this super bright orange and you've got this burgundy and then you go into like another kind of uh, deeper color so he does have some paint all through here and on his belt and then down here on his lower legs and that looks pretty good his face looks super evil and wicked like he's a gargoyle or something he does kind of look like a gargoyle now he does have this 
set of wings. Now, I, I believe, and this is another belief, I could possibly be wrong, but I believe that he shares the exact same pair of wings as Mutant that we're going to see later on. And uh, frankly, I thought I had an extra set of wings to him, but I didn't have him and found out later that Mutant wears them. So I was like, oh, so I guess I did need that other set of wings. So that was pretty awesome too. Uh, looking at this one here, this one is the light laser light one and so he has separate wings that are individual instead of one clip on and then his sparking mechanism does this and as you spark them you can knock the wings off like i just did but they just kind of tab back in to the slots and then also he comes with this now this is supposed to be like a knife or something along those lines and then this is a hilt to hold it in and then this is just kind of like uh, the 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 stocking or the sock or whatever, whatever the hilt just wrapped around, I guess. I guess that's what it is. All goes in the dark. We'll see later on. But the weird thing is this looks so much different than that. Like I've got two staffs. This looks like a different color overall. It's really strange, but, but anyhow, this Gargo looks pretty cool. Let's get on to the next one. So next up on the agenda is Cadre. Cadre is an interesting looking guy with his strange helmet and a cape and so both versions are slightly different for some different reasons, and I'm not even sure if they came with slightly different helmets, because i got a few different helmets that seem just a little bit different colors. Like this guy's orange, this one's red. So they all seem to fit each other's head, which is fine. This is what his ugly mug looks like. He looks ugly and mean. Uh, anyway, the original version comes with a bullet strap that I guess you use to load this gun, and then he comes with like a giant missile. So... So he's got like a quad gun for the bullets and then a, then a giant missile launcher is what this is. I'm not sure. And it's really hard to have him hold this and stand up at the same time. Uh, it it would have been nice if you could have like used it to prop him up. Maybe you still can in a way, but at the same time, it's he doesn't stand too bad, but uh, he is one of the ones that's a little harder to keep standing. Death on the battlefield. Okay, so one of the things that I thought was interesting was that this guy, instead of, which it doesn't make any sense to me, I would think that you could just go with the same old idea of gluing this to the back of the helmet like they did on the original one, and then they could do the same thing over here, but instead they gave him kind of like the uh, Dark Lords. So he's got the Dark Lords thing, I guess that's broken right there, the Dark Lords piece so he can do the sparking gimmick, and the sparking gimmick looks like Laser lights, laser lights. Yeah. Still kind of cool cadre, mean looking dude with his laser lights and his purple cape and his cool helmet. Eh, that's actually kind of a boring helmet. I think the palace guard has a cooler helmet. Next we get into the vizier, which actually there's a picture of vizier in the tower, the inside of the tower of the playset and the castle. So I don't really know the role of the vizier. It just seems like an evil, bad wizard, and maybe that's all that vizier is. Comes with this interesting little uh, staff, totem staff, whatever, and it's hard to even see because it's it's pretty sort of semi-transparent. Almost look like a havoc staff that you get with Skeletor, which is very interesting. And yes, this came out before He-Man, so they weren't copying off of him or anything. But uh, he is laser light. So there's not two versions of the Vizier. So I'm kind of thinking maybe they originally didn't know they were going to make the toy. Or maybe kids wouldn't all spring for this guy with the laser lights. Laser lights. So pretty cool. Interesting. Very little articulation. It's just like a giant uh, hollow tube or something, I guess you could say. And not really anything special. It's It feels kind of cheap. But one of the harder ones to get, I mean, not impossible. There's several of them online to get right now. But it's still one that doesn't pop up too often and is a little bit pricier. Comes with the blue guy, I think, from what I saw in a video. But really nice figure overall and just kind of stands in the background doing more or less nothing. Next up on the agenda is Tongo. And just see how we go from bright orange to kind of dull and purples and then back to bright yellow this is a really cool toy line which does pop on a shelf it looks really colorful and quite beautiful now i have to be careful with this because i am afraid of breaking some of these so with this guy i'm actually missing two parts one for each one of them or actually technically quite a few anyway uh he comes they each come with a staff and uh, one's a laser light, one's not a laser light, and he is painted pretty well with the orange, red, and the silver. Like he's wearing a medallion, but he's not. It's just kind of built in, which is strange because it's almost like 
this is a precursor to the laser lights. I thought that was odd. I was like, well, why doesn't he have the laser lights? And he does. Almost like they had planned this from the get-go, scratched it initially, and said we can come back and do it later because we made a little bit of money on the first wave. So maybe that's what happened in the first series. Got some red paint down here and some crazy-looking toenails. Now, turn them around, and you're going to see his party trick is his backpack of weapons. Now, this guy does not have a backpack of weapons because obviously he has his laser lights. Now, this guy comes with a hand, like a wristband that holds the weapons. The wristband holds the accessories. I'm, I'm guessing. I don't have that piece, and uh, I have more accessories, but most of them are broken. They break very easily. So looking at these, we do have, they slide out, but we do have uh, kind of a mace. We have an axe, and we have what appear to be like two arrows. One, two, two kind of arrows. Uh, one of them is going to have more of an arrowhead on it, so I guess I have two of the same, and it's supposed to have more of an arrowhead to it. So, anyhow, this guy, as simple as he looks, and as common as he is floating around, and as cheap as you can get one with no accessories, getting them complete, getting them complete without things falling down in the background, is very challenging, actually. So, with it, I'm kind of happy with what I've got right here, but they look really good on a shelf, and... In my opinion, if you've got more or less one complete one, I don't both have to be complete. Or, at the end of the day, uh, this is just a fun toy line. It looks good. And, and that's what I've got. And that's what I can show. Next up, we have Lava Lock. And I don't know how I ended up with two Lava Locks, to tell you the truth. But I think it was that one of the sparkers didn't work. So I got one that had a working sparker. Maybe that's what it was that I did. And I think this one's in better condition. So yeah, the one the working sparker is in a little bit better condition. This one's got some stuff going on with him. It's got some paint rub and some damage and stuff. So uh, that's probably what I did. But I think it's cool to have two of these guys. He did come with the little green demon. And uh, that's kind of cool too. But at the end of the day, uh, he doesn't do much with just a little bit of articulation here and there. Now he does have this uh, similar type of a weapon strap. And I thought it was exactly the same as Cadre's. And turns out uh going off camera turns out that is actually a different one it's a little bit longer than cadre's so uh you can't really do a swap well i guess you could figure out a way to swap it and the connection points are different as you can see i i, I think i used a cadre on this i don't know anyhow it does look pretty cool these are uh, an interesting looking figure and when you have that light up bit it it looks cool to have the whole head light up like i mean Lava Lock, uh, just one of those figures that just, it's cool. And I would think you'd need a few of these. They didn't make a first series, this is a second or third series one. So later on in the line, it looks pretty cool. Next up we have Neptool. Neptool is a cool looking sort of, kind of like the merman of the bunch, but he looks like the sea guy. He comes with his tri trident and all of that kind of stuff. And he has, it's like he's king of the sea. He has a shield, which is pretty cool. All this stuff can capture that nice 200 watt light and then probably harness it so we can glow here in a minute. And then uh, he does have quite a bit of paint apps to him up here in the belt and then the lower area there, kind of the darker green right here. So again, another crazy color coordinated change from dark to light and dark to light. I mean, it just really contrasts the whole toy line has a color contrast to it. Now he has his own little, uh, I guess a cape connection insertion point and uh i did try to flatten this cape and it didn't it still wants to curl but it's interesting because the cape actually connects to uh the same piece that we would have on i think cadre had this part and so did the dark lord so dark lord and cadre had the same one so maybe i just got like some mismatched hodgepodge together stuff but that's how mine came and so that's what I'm going to show. And then when I try to look at some online stuff, I don't see any of these guys with capes for the Sparker. And so, again, why are we having this issue? Because we have a Sparker. Uh, pretty cool, though. And let's see, does this one work? Am I getting closer to, like, 70% of them working? Yeah. Really cool. Neptool. Uh, it sounds like it would be, like, a nice aquatic king name. King Neptool of the ocean. And yeah, that works pretty good. And his shield just kind of clips on his hand and all that fits very well. Looks great. Next up we have Mutant. I've, 
Mutun, M-E-U-T-O-N, Mutant. And the thing about this guy is that he looks almost as if he would, uh, I don't know, kind of be a bumblebee, a bug guy. And it's kind of surprising, but he's packed with this little red lava lock looking dude, which is so strange. Lava lock's packed with this guy that color scheme wise would match him better. It's it's so odd, but this guy would match lava lock better. It just doesn't make sense to me. But okay, that's the way it's packed. Okay, we'll just go with it. We'll run with it. He is probably the most interesting figure out of all of them. Very strange looking overall. Big old bug eyes. Uh, just really weird looking. And then again, he's got his uh, wings on the back here, which I think are the exact same mold as what we would see with the... Uh, what was that one? That was Gargo. Gargo. And then here's his laser light thing that's going on. And let's see if we can get this to work. Oh, yeah. Makes his... Looks like his eyes are lighting up. Yeah, you can kind of see it through the plastic, too. But that is a pretty cool effect. Now, I am missing one thing, the most expensive thing with him. And I've seen it several times, uh, you know, in the past couple of years. But you haven't seen it much. And it's his handcuffs. His handcuffs that go on him are... Pretty hard to find, and it's just literally uh, like it looks like a metal chain and uh, some glow in the dark handcuffs, and that's that simple, uh, that easy, but yet again, that hard. So, um, one of those things that I'm not really gonna notice it being missing on my shelf, and so with that, it's not the end of the world, not was putting out big major bucks, but it's still a cool figure and character overall. Okay, so with collecting this line, I really went after the figures, that was my whole goal. I didn't even know I'd pick up a castle for a halfway decent price. And I did not pick this guy up. So this guy here, this is the dragon, and he's called Warlock. Now, the thing about him is that most of these time the wings are broken, and I'm just super gentle with them so I don't break them. And uh, so that's that's that. It's Aside from the wings, he feels a lot like Battle Cat, a Battle Cat knockoff, because he's just more or less a solid piece of plastic. And the wings can move on him. Now he is supposed to have a saddle, and he is supposed to have in this hole here like a clip to hold your Black Star figure in place. Now my Black Stars, I can make them stay on there just fine on a display, without all of that kind of stuff. But the saddle and that clip, and all that starts getting real expensive territory. I don't want to get into, and I, I'm not that concerned about it. But there's also a yellow one. Now this yellow one has the saddle and all that kind of stuff with it. So pretty cool. Uh, overall, you get it complete. It looks a little bit better and it helps your black star figure sit up higher, which would probably make a little bit more sense too. So he's not just looking at the back of the head, but uh, yeah, there's that yellow winged version and it has about a lighter body. So pretty cool figure overall. And it's just one that it does help enhance your display at the end of the day. And it took me a while to figure out how to get this guy into my display. So let's look at the next one. So this is Cadre's Triton Bull. I will put a picture up, uh, hopefully, <laughs> that shows the part that's missing his saddle. But aside from his saddle and another horn, uh, this guy's pretty complete. I was more concerned about getting one that had uh, unbroken wings on it for on the cheap, and I did. And it was kind of cool to have him. But oddly enough, I don't have room in my display for him, so he just kind of stores away. And that's sad because I don't really want to just store stuff away. But uh, he is really cool looking with the golden wings. He's got this nice uh, different variations of paint. Kind of a mean looking eye right there. But I guess you have to really have the saddle to get Cadre on here. Uh, I mean, you can make them work. But it would look a whole lot better with the saddle, I'm sure. But still a really cool mean looking beast of a figure. And again, just like uh, Battle Cat and oh, what we got with uh, Skeletor's purple one. We have this here. So it's just one solid piece, but still pretty cool, pretty interesting. Something about the toy line, a lot of fun. So while you're taking the time out of your day to write in the comments that Skeletor's Purple Cat is Panthor, I know that it just slipped my mind for about a half of a second. Uh, <laughs> anyhow, so getting into the four vehicles. Now there are four vehicles. There is his ship. There's a red and a gray variation. A, that gray one looks almost like a white ship, but I guess gray to kind of sort of match what was going on with Star Wars. Now, that thing is pretty cool, but I didn't go after it because I don't have a plan to display it, so that's why I'm not going after them. And getting all the parts on it, it makes it a little bit harder for that price point getting up there. So the red one, I think, is a European version, and the I think the gray one was released U.S. stateside. So then you get down to the left, we have the Trobit Wind Machine. Now, that kind of reminds me, in a way, of sort of that Turtle's Blimp 
and you get like a beach ball at the top and then uh you have the wind machine and i think grossimer the the one with the big ears the trobit i think he was supposed to be packed with a wind machine but i'm not 100 percent sure but that's what i've heard from people and that's why uh, he was packed with the machine very short run sold by himself and he was also in that four pack so anyhow uh, then we go to the bottom right, and the last vehicle is the rarest of all of them, and it's the Battle Wagon. Is that what it's called? The Battle Wagon? And that thing is really cool looking. It looks like you can fit like four Trobits and a Black Star in it, or something along those lines. Maybe you can fit six. I don't, I've never handled the thing. I've only seen it in pictures, and I think it does look pretty cool. It's massive. It looks massive, and it is one that I've only seen a handful of auctions, and I've only seen them in completed. <laughs> they were up, gone, boom. So it's pretty cool looking. I would probably go after that and just figure out a way to display that thing just because it is so cool. But at the end of the day, I, I don't know. It's, it's one of those really obscure things that I may never get my hands on, but really awesome. When it comes to the castle, uh, mine has a couple of issues and missing some parts. So I'm just going to show a picture of a castle and I think it's really amazing. It looks fantastic. It looks phenomenal. And it, I'm so happy to even have one to display near my collection. So with that, I do want to say that it has a couple of play features in it. And you can, you have the Vizier picture in there. You do have kind of like a computer control panel on the inside or the outside. You have glow in the dark demon heads or dragon heads or something along those lines. And then you have a gun and it's actually a dark gun, all that kind of stuff. So pretty cool play set overall and yeah i think they hit a price point back in the day i think it was only like 25 bucks back in the day way more than that these days all right let's check the glow in the dark feature here all those weapons accessories glow in the dark you're gonna kill the 200 watt light bulb and although it doesn't really look like it's working that much uh, maybe in the editor i can adjust the brightness a bit and yeah maybe i can adjust the brightness and we can see it but i can see it but uh, you see it in person, but not on the camera. That kind of sucks. So I hope you enjoyed this look at John Blackstar, the entire toy line from back in the 80s, 81, 84, from Galoob. This was a fun toy line. I really didn't have it back in the day, so collecting it as an adult, I get to see that these are very nice looking figures, very colorful figures, and they display very well. The, the castle itself is absolutely phenomenal looking. It's not the greatest functionally but these toys themselves are a whole lot of fun very 80s very early 80s and i do like collecting there's a lot of uh, parts and pieces and accessories once you get them all together it looks fantastic but what do you think do you remember having this as a kid do you remember watching this show is this something that's relatively new to you do you collect masters of the universe and think man this would be a nice little subline of masters of the universe in your mind but i'm curious so leave comments down below like and subscribe but damn hang around worship her, my lord. Will they let us take her? They worship her, but they fear me. Bravo, clone. Now do a monkey bird. Why would Amber lead the overlord to Tamborium? She must be under his spell. There's one chance. If I confuse the sand into a dome. Thank you.